Number 19 says a student sits on a rotating stool holding a 2.8, holding two 2.8 kilogram objects. When his arms are extended horizontally, the objects are one meter from the axis of rotation, and he rotates with an angular speed of 0 0.75 radians per second. The moment of inertia of the student plus the stool is three kilograms uh, times meters squared and is assumed to be constant. The student then pulls in the objects horizontally to 0.28 meters from the rotation axis. A. Find the new angular speed of the student and B. Find the kinetic energy of the student before and after the objects are pulled in. So here we have a conservation of momentum problem. So we know uh, from laws of conservation of angular momentum that the angular momentum in the beginning should equal the angular momentum after he pulls the objects in. And so the angular momentum is equal to the moment of inertia times the angular, velo the angular speed. And so the, there's actually two things that are going to change. Both of these are going to change. The, the moment of inertia will change and the speed will change. Uh, but the, the thing that will remain constant is the, the angular momentum. And so let's calculate the angular momentum from the beginning. So we know he has two weights in his hand. Both of those weights weigh uh, 2.8 kilograms. So he has a total mass of 5.6 kilograms. So let's set this up as a before and an after. And we're going to say that he, he started off with a mass of 5.6 kilograms. He continued with a mass of 5.6 kilograms after they were pulled in. The starting radius was 1 meter. The ending radius was 0 0.28 meters. The, uh, the, we want to know the, the moment of inertia for for the student in the stool, so we'll call it the student in the stool, was uh, was three, and it said it was assumed to remain constant. So, and then finally, the angular speed was given as 0 0.75. Now, all of this right here is just needed so we can calculate the moment of inertia for the weights. So, the the moment of inertia for the weights is going to be equal to the mass times the radius squared so one squared is going to be one so the moment of inertia for the weights is 5.6 here and afterwards it's going to be 0, 0.43904 so in order to get the total moment of inertia you have to add these together so the I'm going to try to squeeze this in down at the bottom. The just I, I overall is going to be 8.6 and 3.43904. Now these are all of the values we need to go ahead, and we got this as unknown. So we can go ahead and say that L1, uh, the the moment, the uh, angular momentum in the first place is equal to I times the angular speed. The angular, the uh, the moment of inertia we said was 8.6, so L1 is equal to 8.6 times the angular speed we said is 0 0.75, and so L1 equals 6.45. Now we know because of the the conservation of angular momentum, L1 equals L2. Well, what does L2 equal? So L2 equals the the mass is going to stay the same, so well, actually, we just we just need to put in I. We already calculated I over here, um, so 3.43904. So 3.43904 times the new angular velocity. Well, we don't know what that is, so we can we can substitute. If L2 equals L1, we know that L2 equals 6.45. So we can say that 6.45 equals 3.43904 let me make a better 4 904 times the angular velocity the angular speed you just divide to find the angular speed so the angular speed equals 1.875524 so this is our new angular speed 
and we need to calculate the kinetic energies in both situations. So the formula for kinetic energy, kinetic energy of rotational uh, energy is is one half times I times omega squared. And so we got omega of the afterward. We got omega initially. We just got to plug in all of our values. So we say that the Ke initial well, is e uh, this is rotational energy, by the way, is equal to one half, and then I we said was eight point six, so eight point six times, and we said that the angular speed was point seven five, so we got to square that zero point seven five squared, and that equals two point four one eight seven five seven five two point four one eight seven five is our initial rotational kinetic energy. Then we can find the, the kinetic energy in the final state, or the rotational energy, is one half times. And now we, we said that I uh, I final was 3.43904, so times 3.43904 times the the angular velocity squared, so times 1.875 squared. We plug all that in and you get 6.04 we'll say 6.048 and that's it the units are joules and so um, our final our final kinetic energy 6.40 or 6.048 and the the initial kinetic energy was 2.4187 and so um, I know this isn't in the question, but just FYI, since you got all your answers, you could actually calculate the work done by the students, uh, by the student or the the the, uh, the person sitting in the chair. It says a student sitting in a chair. You can calculate the work done by the student sitting in the chair by by the change the change of kinetic energy. And so, what work did he do when he pulled those weights closer to him? The work would be equal to 6.048 minus 2.4187.